The Sigma 30mm f1.4 DC-DN Contemporary Prime Lens is a lens that was announced by Sigma in February of 2016. It's part of a trio of lenses, the other two being a 16mm and a 56mm, but this was the first lens that I ever bought for my first camera, and today I'm doing a long-term review of this lens. So you guys ready? Let's get to it. So the Sigma 30mm f1.4 is a prime lens, and what that means is you cannot zoom in or out with this lens. It's just one fixed focal length. If you want to get closer or further away from your subject, you need to physically move closer or further away. And if you're curious like I was when I was first starting out, why they would even make lenses that can't zoom in and out, basically prime lenses tend to be a little bit smaller, lighter, cheaper, and sharper than zoom lenses, but zoom lenses are much more versatile because you can zoom in and out with them. And speaking of zooming in and out, on the outside of this lens you will find no controls whatsoever except your focus ring. Granted it is a really nice feeling focus ring but there's no buttons, there's no switches, there's no aperture ring, no zoom ring, nothing like that whatsoever. All you got is your focus ring here. Another thing you may notice about my particular model is there's no sunshade on it and that is because I accidentally threw it out with the box. I keep the boxes for all my camera gear in case I want to resell any of it and for some reason the box for this lens got thrown out with the sunshade in it so we won't be covering that in this review and while we're talking about shade the filter thread size on this lens is 52 millimeters and that's pretty small compared to most lenses on the market especially full frame lenses so what I recommend everybody do if they're starting out and they have these small filter thread sizes is buy the filters that you want the ND filter or the CPL filter or the effects filters in the largest size that you can find which would be like 82 millimeters for most lens filters the reason you would do this is because you're going to adapt adapt them onto this lens and they're going to cover every size lens that you buy in the future as opposed to buying the filter thread size of this exact lens and then you find out that you want a larger lens and now you have to replace all your filters. It's much easier to just buy the biggest one right off the bat and just adapt it down to whatever size you need. If you were curious, this is a step up ring. It's basically just a little metal adapter and it allows you to screw a larger filter into a smaller lens and it will save you a lot of money because this thing was like five dollars as opposed to replacing all your filters which I'm in the middle of doing right now and it sucks trust me so the Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 was designed with small mirrorless cameras in mind it's not a full-frame lens it only comes in Canon EFM Sony E Leica L and Micro Four Thirds so obviously you won't be buying this lens if you own a full-frame camera granted you could put this lens on a full-frame camera if you buy it in like Sony E or Leica L but it's not going to use the whole size of the sensor and you're either going to have to crop in or the camera's just going to do it for you. And also while we're talking about focal length and sensor size, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the full frame equivalent focal length of this lens. Basically when you take a 30 millimeter lens and you say put it on your Canon M50 like I have here, you have to multiply the focal length by 1.6 because of the smaller sensor size. So it's actually going to be a little bit more zoomed in at 45 millimeters. The reason I bring this up is because if you're looking around the internet at pictures of 30 millimeter photos photos or videos and you see what those look like on full frame, it's not going to look the same on a crop sensor camera, which is more than likely what you're buying this lens for. Let's talk about price. The 30mm f1.4 can be found for as low as $250, but you can also buy the trio of lenses, meaning the 56, the 30, and the 16 for as low as $1,000, which I saw on Adorama today. And this is an insane value, especially for what you're getting priced to performance wise. These lenses are amazing for how much they cost. I was actually spoiled in that the first two lenses that I bought were the 30 millimeter and the 56 millimeter and then I just thought to myself like oh well good glass just isn't that expensive I guess <laughs> and then I switched to full frame and what are you doing oh god no please no but enough of me talking up this lens let's go take a look at how this lens actually performs <sighs> That was way more intense than it needed to be. <laughs> this is just some normal Rembrandt lighting through the 30 millimeter at f1.4, ISO 160, and 1 1 25th of a second shutter speed, shooting at 60 frames per second. There's also a hair light behind me, which is just causing this glow on the side and on the side of my face. 
This is exactly what it would look like if you shot it through the M50 in just normal lighting conditions. Obviously there's like very little background, it's probably all black. After this I'm going to show you some portrait photos, some product videos, a video that I did of my friend's car and I shot the entire thing on the 30 millimeters. Now here we are in the exact same situation but I made it look a little more normal. I just wanted to do kind of like a control but let's move on to those product videos. So this is a B-roll segment that I did for my friend's company, The Daily Burnout. It's a car culture company, go check them out. This is just a clip from a much longer video that he hired me to do, but at the time my main rig was the M50 with the 30 millimeter lens on it, so I thought it was fitting to put it in the test segment. So I've owned the 30 millimeter F1.4 for a couple years now, and as I said, it was my first lens, and I have no regrets about this being my first lens. I like recommending prime lenses to beginners for a couple reasons. The first is you're gonna move around more. You're gonna look for the right composition or what spot to shoot from, and that's good practice for a beginner. You don't wanna just zoom in to whatever looks good. This is not about the photography. This is about God. The second reason is prime lenses tend to be sharper, have faster apertures, so the bokeh is a little bit nicer, and when you get home as a beginner and you pop your SD card in and you see all these really nice looking images, it's gonna make you wanna pick up your camera more. That's not to say that zoom lenses look bad, I just feel like a beginner would have more fun being creative with a prime lens. Another thing I really like about this lens, especially for beginners, is the focal length. The 45 millimeter full frame equivalent is insanely versatile. It's right in that nifty 50 range where it's good at portraits, it's good at product photos, wildlife, you could shoot cars, maybe some landscapes. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this focal length and that's what you want out of your prime lens. You don't want it to just do one thing because then it's just kind of a waste. If I had to complain about anything with this lens, it's just the autofocus can be a little bit noisy at times and other than that, it's just not weather sealed, but you can't ask for everything out of a $250 lens. So we'll let those things slide. But that's been my review of the 30 millimeter F1.4 DCD and contemporary prime lens by Sigma for my Canon M50. Wow, that's a long name. Other than that, if you could go down and hit the like and subscribe button, it means the world to content creators like me. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Sam Has a Spending Problem, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.